Hello. Welcome to the course on polymers. Uh, in the fifth week, we have switched gears now and uh, looking at uh, the properties uh, after having looked at uh, different kinds of materials. Uh, we are uh, looking at uh, mechanical, uh, electrical and uh, physical chemical properties. And uh, one important influencer uh, in uh, arriving at these properties are a set of uh, additives which are used uh, in polymeric systems. Given that we have uh, blends and composites, so we, we always have to formulate a polymeric material. And formulations of polymeric materials are, are proprietary for most uh, industries and, and they in fact uh, just, just saying that it is a polypropylene or just saying that uh, it's, it's an epoxy material is not enough. Uh, there, there are so many uh, details associated with uh, not just the macromolecular details of the polymer being used. But what are the different additives being used for the eventual material system which is used for industrial applications? So, therefore, formulation of a material is, is an extremely important activity for uh, eventual applications of these materials. And so, by keeping our focus on the uses, uh, what we will do is first uh, look at uh, the different uh, class of uh, additives which are uh, normally associated with a polymeric product. And uh, we will close by uh, looking at uh, the impact because these are available in small quantities in the final product, but they can have significant uh, impact uh, given that they are small molecules which can exchange themselves with the surrounding. So, the uh, additives uh, can be thought of as being used either uh, during the polymerization itself. Uh, once polymerization is done, uh, fabrication and uh, processing of the materials is involved. So, some additives may be required for that stage. Uh, of course, all, all of this is being done so that uh, polymeric material performs a role in terms of its application. So, uh, additives uh, can be used, uh, they are incorporated into the composite or blend or a single polymer to, to enhance performance or to optimize performance. So, we, we have uh, additives of all the at each stage of the material. Of course, in case of polymerization, we have initiators, catalysts, uh, accelerators. So, these are uh, 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 materials which uh, take part in reactions or they enhance the rate of reactions or control the rate of reactions. For example, you could also uh, add uh, inhibitors depending on uh, uh, what is the, if we want chemical reaction to be suppressed for a certain amount of time before we want chemical reaction to proceed further, uh, an inhibitor could also be thought of. Just the way accelerator is a common uh, ingredient with most of polymeric material formulations. Because when we do polymerizations uh, uh, in a practical scenario, we uh, would want the rate to be as high as possible. And uh, the additives for processing are uh, mainly to manipulate the flow behavior. So, plasticizer is a very important component of uh, most uh, product formulations so that uh, viscosity and other rheological properties of uh, polymeric materials are controlled uh, so that we can obtain uh, flow efficiently. Uh, many times we may want to uh, have not a very high pressure drop because that leads to its own complication in terms of higher cost as well as uh, issues related to uh, degradation in properties due to very high amount of stresses. So, therefore, plasticization is, is very important in terms of uh, manipulating the flow behavior during processing. Uh, depending on the requirement of the process, for example, if you are making a foam, then uh, we may also add a foaming agent or a blowing agent. So, the purpose of this blowing agent uh, is, is to create the uh, bubbles and then eventually lead to a porous polymeric material. Then once polymer solidifies, it becomes foam. And uh, you have seen uh, around us not just styrofoam, but there are several foam products, uh, whether it is in uh, mattresses, whether it is in uh, insulation uh, or uh, false roofing uh, at uh, in residences. Also, uh, many of the important electronic uh, and electrical components uh, contain a lot of uh, foam materials, polyurethane or uh, other materials, which basically are used as uh, electrical or thermal insulators as the case may be. So, therefore, foaming and blowing uh, agents are an important class of additives. As far as performance is concerned, uh, uh, we, if we have uh, blends or composites, then we need uh, compatibilizers sometimes to reduce cost or to achieve 
electrical conductivity or other properties, we may need fillers. Uh, we may uh, also of course, uh, have to worry about uh, the fire resistance of materials. So, can, can we add some things which will retard the spreading of flames and the burning of the materials. Uh, a lot of the times uh, product uh, may accumulate static on the surface and that may be uh, not a good. For example, for a door knob, we, we do not want it to accumulate static. It is it's it's an example which is uh, directly involving, involving us and we getting a shock is uh, usually uh, a discomfort. So, so can we have uh, door knobs where uh, static does not accumulate. So, anti-static properties so that surface charges do not accumulate. Uh, of course, aesthetic point of view colors, uh, sometimes uh, color may be an important part of the performance of the material itself. Uh, and also lubricants. Uh, for example, if this uh, solid material uh, that we are using and uh, many times Teflon and nylon components are used in machines, uh, where lubrication also has to be there. So, that the, the sliding of one material polymeric material over either a metal or another polymer can becomes easy. So, can surface uh, properties of uh, polymers be modified in such a way that uh, they are self lubricating. So, that is also so, these are uh, some of the additives that are added to achieve basically a set of uh, performance uh, uh, criteria. Uh, we also uh, add uh, so that uh, whatever performance we design the material for, it remains that way. So, that stability of the material uh, to temperature, uh, to oxygen, to uh, radiation, uh, to attack from fungus or uh, bacteria. So, all of these are important in terms of stability. So, many times we add uh, add additives in polymeric materials, so that they achieve some of this stability. Of course, how, how much of uh, what to add and which components to add depends on several features of miscibility of polymer systems with these additives, uh, the dosage required of these additives to maintain a certain degree of stability. For example, if we have a service life, uh, which is let us say 20 years as opposed to service life, which is uh, one year. Uh, also, within this service life, uh, if the UV exposure is 24 hours a day, uh, 365 days a year, then we will have a certain uh, different requirement. If the exposure to UV light, let us say, and sunlight is only maybe can be considered to be about uh, 50 days in a year, then it is a different kind of uh, requirement. So, so all these additives, uh, plethora of materials which are needed for a successful application will have to be decided based on the specific material and specific application. But you can see that there is a broad range of materials and, and there that is why I said that it is non-trivial to talk about a final material which is being used in a product and it is it is a formulation that is why uh, uh, application uh, people uh, industries keep this closely guarded uh, either a trade secret or, or basically uh, through uh, intellectual property rights these are protected. Because small variations in these components can have make a big difference in terms of the eventual performance. And this is how one material formulation is distinguished from the other. And, and quite often uh, a, a new entrepreneur uh, may come up with an idea to you know do a replacement of an existing product. And sometimes they come saying that you know let us say this is a I, I, am, I am an entrepreneur trying to make a pen. And I will say, ok, I will take an existing pen and I will try to do some analysis on it, find out all the polymer that is used and I can then successfully make a, an industry with making pen. So, uh, in, in terms of finding out the polymer which is used, let us say in the front part of the pen, pen uh, the cap of the pen, the main body of the pen, maybe that is easy to find. But what I am trying to emphasize is that is not the only thing. This may be 99 percent of what the final formulation is, but it is the remaining 1 percent which crucially determines what the performance of the pen will be. For example, when we grip the pen and we write it, how does it feel? Uh, how uh, shiny is the pen surface? How uh, strong it is? If I uh, make it fall once or twice, will it break? If I leave it in the sunlight, will uh, after 2, 3 days, will it start uh, becoming somewhat flaky? If it gets subjected to water and oil, does it start becoming? So, there are several performance related issues uh, and all of these are determined based on not just the polymer itself, but all the additives which are added. So, let us look at uh, plasticizer as a class of uh, uh, additives, because they, they have they play a very important role uh, in processing 
but uh, I, I would also like to uh, state here that uh, plasticizers are important from performance point of view also because they determine segmental flexibility in the final part. And so plasticizers many times are added also to keep the, mo modify the mechanical properties of the material. So if let's say in case of PVC, we want a, a flexible uh, material uh, like uh, what uh, can be used in uh, bags and uh, other materials, then we may add plasticizer. But if we are interested in making PVC pipes, which is a, a hard uh, and stiff material, then we may uh, not use plasticizer for performance there. So depending on the requirements, plasticizer may be added for performance. And uh, so what plasticizer does is it uh, reduces the viscosity and which is useful for processing, but it also reduces the glass transition temperature, which is relevant if at all uh, we are, we have to manipulate glass transition temperature in a performing formulation. And this is because uh, one can think in terms of free volume theory and uh, then the rationalization will be that uh, it increases the free volume. And uh, because free volume increases, the glass transition temperature goes down. And uh, Gordon Taylor is one uh, uh, empirical, semi-empirical uh, equation available, which uh, tries to find out that if you have a glass transition temperature of uh, two species which are added in uh, two different weight fractions, W1 and W2, then uh, knowing this uh, parameter, uh, the Gordon Taylor parameter K, uh, we can then find out the uh, glass transition of the plasticized polymer. And uh, 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 of course, the solvents and also monomers themselves can also play the role of plasticizers. So small molecules which are intentionally added as plasticizer, but also residual monomers, residual solvents which remain behind as a consequence of polymerization or whatever processing that was done earlier. And uh, so, so uh, the role of all of these is crucial in terms of determination of the final properties. And uh, as was highlighted uh, uh, in uh, lectures on uh, mechanical properties, nylon for example, whether it is dry or with some amount of water or conditioned nylon, the properties are very different. And that is because uh, water uh, interacts with uh, macromolecular chain is one way of saying it. Another way of saying it is water is a plasticizer for nylon, that is another way of saying it. Third way I can say is water changes the free volume in nylon and therefore changes the glass transition temperature. So all of these are synonymous, uh, it is just different ways in which we describe the underlying mechanism or interaction between water and nylon macromolecules or polyamide macromolecules. So phthalates are commonly used for uh, PVC. Also for rubber, uh, we use this uh, benzene thiol and uh, this exam question, uh, in fact, uh, this is, uh, I would say a very popular question uh, in uh, many of the exams. Given the range of additives which are used, uh, a, a polymer engineer would need to have a good sense of, you know, what additive is used for what purpose. And uh, in, in some sense, you might think that this is pure information and I can always get it. But again, uh, looking at the physicochemical nature of the additive, we can guess and try to develop a judgment as to what may be its purpose. So we've already seen that purpose could be a plasticizer, purpose could be enhancing the reaction rate, it could be to prevent uh, fire hazard, or it could be to make uh, foam. So uh, you can uh, go through each of these compounds. What I would suggest is just look at their uh, chemical structure uh, look at what are the functional groups which are present and then can you make a judgment regarding which of these roles it may perform. And of course, as I have already said, uh, the uh, R is anyway related to uh, it is a plasticizer. So you can clearly see that maybe you have to figure out uh, which one of these two is the answer. So try analyzing the structure and the role and uh, we already saw that what is the purpose of each of these additives. So why would it? Uh, why would these compounds play that role? So think about it as we go along. Uh, fire flame uh, retardants are another important class of materials. And one way to measure uh, flame retardancy is uh, what is called uh, a limiting oxygen in in index. And basically this is an assessment of uh, flammability of polymers, how easy or difficult it is for a polymer to burn. And uh, this is the minimum volume percent of oxygen of course, uh, in mixture because it is in air, 
the, we are trying to simulate what is the amount of oxygen required for the combustion to happen. So, at what percentage of oxygen uh, the combustion is supported? And uh, can you try to reason out uh, will is low amount of uh, LOI or COI better or high amount? Given the definition that it is the minimum volume percent of oxygen concentration needed to support combustion. So, higher amount of oxygen will imply that we need lot of oxygen for combustion to be supported. In other case, we require very low amount of oxygen. So, which one of these would be desirable? Uh, think about it. So, retardants uh, for example, can be halogenic compounds, uh, bromine, chlorine related uh, or many of them contain phosphorus. Uh, antimony oxides, uh, boron compounds and alumina trihydrate are some other common examples of these retardants. Uh, why are these materials used as retardants? And what, what is the role they play? And, and for that uh, one would have to think you know what is combustion? How does combustion proceed for a macromolecular case? What, what is meant by combustion? Uh, if you look at let us say a hydrocarbon based uh, polymer such as polyethylene, then it just has C and H. And uh, eventual uh, goal of combustion would be for all the C to go to carbon dioxide and all the H to go to water. So, basically uh, combustion is uh, nothing but uh, a reaction in which uh, finally, uh, we get uh, CO2 and water. And so, combustion is a process in which uh, polymer plus O2 will give you CO2 and H2O. Of course, if uh, polymer itself contains uh, nitrogen and uh, sulfur and uh, other heteroatoms, then uh, combustion will also include things like SOx, uh, NOx and so on, nitrogen oxide, sulfur oxides. So, but this is the process of oxidation of a polymer. So, how does this proceed? And uh, what we will uh, see is uh, all of these are uh, free radical initiated uh, processes and uh, if, if the additive can scavenge can uh, uh, react with those free radicals, then basically the rate of combustion is inhibited. So, that is why uh, generation of uh, uh, radicals by which you can trap the reactive radicals from the macromolecule is the key mechanism by which these uh, flame retardants work. And uh, to uh, uh, let you complete your thought process regarding the order of limiting oxygen index in uh, different polymers, uh, you have to think uh, which one will be better frame uh, resistant uh, material and why. So, if, if uh, you have let us say Teflon in which you have Cf2, Cf2, uh, will it have any ability to generate uh, highly reactive radicals from macromolecules? How easy or difficult will it be as opposed to let us say PVC or uh, nylon or polypropylene? So, so, think about it, you will have to think both from the point of view of macromolecular uh, groups which are present and in terms of ease of burning of these polymers, what is your judgment? So, just think about it uh, while we proceed further and uh, look at the other class of important addi uh, additives which are stabilizers. And these again uh, stability is mainly in terms of uh, basically trying to capture whatever active species are formed. So, that these active species do not react with macromolecules, but end up reacting with these additives. And uh, generally phenols and uh, amines are a very important class of uh, uh, stabilizers. And so, butyl phenol uh, is used uh, in uh, rubber for example. And so, this is a commonly you will see that when you look at the rubber formulation, there will be at least 8 to 10 um, uh, substances which will be mentioned. Some of them will be related to uh, the uh, plasticizing action, some of them will be related to uh, the manipulation of uh, rates of uh, curing or rates of cross linking and some of them will be related to stability once the final part is made. And uh, of course, sometimes there can be a homolysis or breakup of the chain and uh, that uh, can be prevented uh, using phosphides. And uh, UV absorption can also be done using uh, some of the phenons or triazoles, but also carbon black. And uh, so, uh, UV absorbing materials basically can absorb uh, the UV radiation, uh, they will dissipate it uh, in the form of heat, but they will not get chemically altered. 
So, the energies of the bond uh, formation and breakage in these materials are not uh, similar to what is the kind of radiation energy that comes from UV. So, therefore, these materials are stable and they will absorb the radiation and therefore prevent uh, macromolecules from degrading because of the UV radiation. So, uh, in terms of these additives and given their large numbers, uh, the amount may be small, but we have large number of physicochemical species which are used as additives. And so, they are used in small quantities, but they have a very significant impact because they are exchanged with the surroundings. So, uh, you, you can have a, a additive leach out to polymer. And so, in food for example, this is a very common uh, concern and uh, we will often hear of food grade PET. That implies that the PET has a set of additives which first of all may not leach to the food which is being stored or secondly even if they leach, they are safe for consumption. They are safe for uh, human consumption. So, that is why then it will be called a food grade polymer. And uh, so, uh, this exchange of uh, PET can happen uh, not just during service life, it can happen also during processing itself. So, if we are using let us say a plasticizer during processing, we will have to worry about occupational health and safety of the personnel which are doing molding operations. And uh, so, the, the staff there should not be exposed to the plasticizer if it is uh, it is toxic or it has certain health consequences. So, we have to worry about exchange not in terms of during service life, we have to worry about during processing. And of course, uh, given uh, the questionable sustainability that is being raised about many of these polymeric materials, we have to also worry about exchange with surrounding whether it is air or uh, soil or water uh, during the disposal uh, eventual whenever service life is over. And a couple of examples that I have given here is uh, basically if you have a plastic wa waste yard and uh, this is a measurement uh, from uh, uh, India uh, from a research paper and, and you can see that uh, bisphenol A which is uh, uh, used in uh, polycarbonates, epoxies and, and so, so uh, it is an important uh, industrial chemical and uh, you can see that uh, in some cases near landfill the quantities are very high compared to what is uh, permissible in terms of uh, what might have an health impact. And so, this is something uh, very crucial because what eventually will happen is this, uh, this is near the landfill itself or near the yard itself. But eventually, because all water sources are connected to each other, it can then uh, get transported. So, the fate and transport of bisphenol A in this case is, is very important in terms of determining the overall impact of the polymers. And uh, therefore, additives su being sustainable is also become an important issue. So, can we use set of additives which do not have health consequences when they leach out or get exchanged with the surrounding? And, and that is an important area. So, not only do we have to make polymeric uh, macromolecules themselves sustainable, we have to make the final product sustainable. And since additives are an important uh, part of the overall product, we need to make sure that many of these additives are also uh, less harmful, they require less footprint to make and uh, they are based on renewable resources and so on. And so, the another example is uh, just measurement of estrone. Uh, which uh, basically gives us an idea of the amount of thalates present and that is also significant in many of these uh, places. So, so, this is an important determinant uh, of uh, the overall sustainability of polymeric materials and as we look at uh, macromolecular sustainability, we need to look at additive sustainability as well. So, uh, this idea that uh, there is an exchange uh, in terms of diffusion of uh, species, in terms of absorption because these polymers could take up uh, material from the surrounding also. It could leach which is giving out to the surrounding and uh, there may be uh, swelling because the polymer is absorbing. So, all of these interrelated phenomena we will look in uh, lectures uh, 81 and 82. So, with this uh, we come to the end. Uh, I, I hope uh, through your survey of uh, those uh, molecules and by thinking you know that for example, Teflon uh, would uh, have a uh, difficulty in generating uh, the uh, active species while polypropylene on the other hand will be uh, easily flammable. So, you, you can look at the structure and then try to justify uh, the results uh, that uh, are there for those questions.
So with this, uh, we will uh, close this lecture on uh, additives that are used in polymeric products and then we will continue our journey towards looking at different properties. Thank you.